What's up guys, my name's JTalk, let's talk about some gaming news. So Microsoft's Xbox One, or as it will be forever known by the end of all this, the Xbox 180, has pulled yet another complete reversal on a previously established policy. The policy in question is that it was previously established that on the Xbox One, independent developers would not be able to self-publish. Well that's now a thing of the past, as the Xbox One is now going to include a open dev kit to anyone and will allow self-publishing. Xbox Vice President Mark Witten had this to say on the matter. Our vision is that every person can be a creator, that every game and experience can take advantage of all of the features of Xbox One and Xbox Live. This means self-publishing, this means connect, the cloud, and achievements. This means great discoverability on Xbox Live. We'll have more details on the program and the timeline at Gamescom in August. Now it's also confirmed that this development kit will not be available at launch, and that basically confirms that this is just something that Microsoft quickly whipped up over the last month to try and compete with uh, the PlayStation 4's just glaring advantages. And it really doesn't matter if you're a fan of Xbox, PlayStation, Nintendo, PC, or part of the multi-platform master race, doesn't matter at all, because really, this competition is good for everyone. It is a good thing that Microsoft is moving in the right direction. The things that the PlayStation 4 has, Microsoft is doing its best not just to match them, but to one-up them. And the reason that's good is because, honestly, like, if PlayStation 4 was the undisputed king of console gaming, then you're very quickly going to see the incentives and the good things Sony is doing they're quickly going to go away because Sony is realizing there's no one standing against them, not really anyway. And so with Gamescom well on its way, and Microsoft has been confirmed to be hosting an actual press conference at Gamescom to quote unquote reiterate the message and mission of the Xbox One, I'm really curious to see what else Microsoft is going to bring out in the next, you know, 30 days or so to try and bring themselves back into the spotlight, bring themselves back to being a serious contender with PlayStation 4. Phil Fish, the creator of the popular indie game Fez and controversy enthusiast, has, for the lack of a better term, completely rage quit game development and thrown Fez 2 in the can. Following a Twitter rage meltdown between Marcus Beer, a games journalist, and Phil Fish, Polytron made the following statement on their Twitter account to confirm that Fez 2 had indeed been cancelled. So basically what kicked this whole thing off is that Marcus Beer was on a panel discussion broadcast for game trailers called Invisible Walls. During this broadcast, Marcus Beer goes after not just Phil Fish, but also Jonathan Blow for refusing to comment on Xbox's decision to bring back self-publishing for the Xbox One. Throughout his rant, he used words such as asshole and wanker and tosspot to describe the pair, and basically went after them because they would not comment to help the press if it did not serve the needs of promoting their game. So basically, after Phil found out, there was this huge explosion on Twitter, massive arguments, Phil telling Beer to go kill himself, and Phil Fish at the end just said, you know what, screw it, I'm cancelling Fez 2, I'm getting out of this industry, I'm done. Now the first thing everyone wants to do in this situation is immediately pick sides. Who's on the right? Is it Phil Fish or Marcus Beer? Personally, I think both of these guys are total idiots in this situation who completely screwed up. Marcus Beer, you are not entitled to comments uh, just because you're in the press or you helped promote someone's game. You are not entitled to get uh, information and stories from people. And Phil Fish, like, you have just at this point amassed a mountain of controversy around you, just a true legacy of hate from the internet. And you cannot seem to handle any kind of negativity, yet you just keep doing it. Any kind of criticism that gets brought towards Phil, he seems to turn it into this very childish internet anger and just lashes out, which just makes people hate you more. Really, it doesn't matter that you made a very well-received indie game, because if no one likes you, people aren't going to want to support you. It doesn't matter if that's right or wrong, that's just the way it's going to play out. So if you can't handle that, if you can't deal with that, then you are right to be getting out of this industry. Personally, I would not be at all surprised if Phil came back to do Fez 2 anyway after a certain amount of time, but... This is certainly a low point for his internet reputation and overall popularity. After a frustratingly long wait, the Bioshock Infinite DLC has finally been announced, and it's called Bioshock Infinite Burial at Sea. Well, actually, there is a piece of DLC available right now called Clash in the Clouds, which is five bucks, but it's pretty much throwaway. It's really just a horde mode on four maps in the Bioshock Infinite world that focuses on the combat with no narrative and is pretty much throwaway if you actually just cared about the narrative and the presentation of Bioshock Infinite. But anyway, Burial at Sea takes place in Rapture, pre-Cataclysm Rapture, which is incredibly cool, and it does bring back Booker and Elizabeth as playable characters. 
The DLC will be released in two parts, one for each playable character, and will feature new weapons, plasmids, and even big daddies. So this really sounds and looks so cool, but the downside? Not going to be released till 2014, which is uh, getting close to a year from the launch of Bioshock Infinite. And with the new consoles coming out, if you played this on PS3 or Xbox 360, you better hang on to your console because otherwise it doesn't look like you're going to be able to play it. So really this looked awesome, but I don't think I'll be keeping my Xbox into the next generation. So hopefully it will come out as a standalone DLC on PC for me to play. And to wrap up today's news, it looks like we could finally be seeing the long-awaited sequel to the popular Rockstar game Bully coming out on next gen. The game's publisher, Take-Two Interactive, has filed for a new Bully trademark covering video game programs and software. And it really doesn't surprise me at all that we'll be seeing Bully on next gen, because Rockstar has said that they love the game and they do want to come back to it, but they do have a reputation of taking their time with their sequels. We're going to soon be nearing about 8 years since Bully has last made an appearance, and Take-Two has also said that they have in the pipeline for next-gen releases, new IP as well as bringing back old proven franchises. Max Payne and GTA sequels obviously are not going to be on the next-gen lineup because they're just so recent. It's a bit too soon to be looking at a new Red Dead game, and I don't in any way see how the Warriors could get a sequel. Bully and Midnight Club are really the only ones that I could see actually working in a uh, release window time slot for next-gen. I really don't know what direction they would go in for a Bully sequel, I don't know if we'll be playing as Jimmy Hopkins again or if we'll be returning to Bullworth Academy, but Rockstar has proven themselves to be a stamp of quality on the case of a game, so I have full faith in them to take the game in a direction that will work. Alright, so that wraps up this episode of JTalk News. I kind of had to hold off on releasing this episode for a while because there was just a very slow period of news for a while, but finally got some good stuff, so here we go. Uh, let me know what you think of the stories I presented on today. Bully 2, do you think it's going to be any good? When do you think it's going to come out? Uh, Bioshock Infinite DLC, do you think they're kind of going a little too late on this one? Do you think people are still going to be interested? Regardless, let me know. Thank you very much for watching, and please check out my channel for some of my other content. My name has been JTalk. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope you have a good one.